everybody. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, my all Madden sliders that I have created, uh, my custom sliders. Um, these are meant for realism and a challenge for anybody that plays on all Madden but just happens to just be just past that point where they're too good for all Madden. Um, these numbers definitely will give you the most challenge and will definitely give you um, the most realistic stats if you play for realism, which I happen to play 13 minute quarters and I try to get the most realistic stats possible. And these, these, some games really do look like the real thing and it's, and it's really impressive. Um, let's start with uh, player quarterback accuracy. I have that set to six and I'm going to skip ahead real quick and show you that the computer quarterback accuracy is also set to six. The reason this number is at six is because any higher and the quarterback is just laser accurate. I had the, the computer quarterback accuracy set to about 20 and it was giving me games where Colin Kaepernick and Geno Smith were throwing almost completely perfect games. 21 of 21, 30 of 30 completions. I remember specifically one time Austin Davis threw 34 of 34 completions for about 450 yards. It was the most ridiculous thing. And that was with quarterback accuracy set to 28. With it at six, you will see a lot more overthrows, a lot more underthrows. Um, a lot of, you'll see a quite a, quite a bit more um, uh, passes thrown out of bounds, um, throwaways. Uh, and going back when, with the computer accuracy set to six as well, um, the computer... The only time that I would get intercept uh, incompletions for the quarterback on the computer side is when I would intercept the pass or if the pass was caught out of bounds. Those were the only two times occasions where uh, passes would be incomplete. With this number set to six, you will see passes hit the ground, go over a receiver's head, go out of bounds. It's just more realistic that way. And those games with Geno Smith throwing near perfect games, they're long gone. Um, moving ahead, uh, pass blocking. I have it set to zero. Um, my offense, the Raiders offensive line is not very good, but I hardly give up any sacks. I do throw a very quick West Coast, you know, style offense, so that could have something to do with it, but this gives the computer the best chance at, at sacking the quarterback. And honestly, I don't think, I think the game, the most I've ever let up in a game was four sacks. And that's always been set to zero. So don't think that, you know, if, if you happen to have a game where they're getting, or games where they're sacking you all the time, definitely, you know, change that number a little bit. But I wouldn't go too far. <clears throat> uh, wide receiver catching, I have set to 30. Um, this just, I, a number I randomly settled on. Um, but it gives me the, it gives you the most realism in the way that Receivers going, going over the middle, and they catch the ball, and they get lit up by a linebacker or a safety charging in. They're not going to hold on to that ball nine times out of ten. And with this number set to 30, unless your receiver has great hands and good spectacular or catching traffic skill, he's going to drop that ball. So wide receiver catching set to 30. And this also makes it so that there are you know, a few times a game where you drop some easy passes. And that just happens in real life, too. So... Um, if you don't happen to like it, I would raise it about 5, but I wouldn't go any higher than 40 is probably the maximum I would put it at. Uh, run blocking. This is one of the sliders that I uh, spent the most time working on. Um, I settled on 43 because even at 46, which I had it set to for a while, I was having games where um, Darren McFadden would rush for 150 yards a game on 18 carries and I would go through the entire season like that and it was just getting really ridiculous and even just lowering it three points to 43 I'm getting games where I'm rushing 20 times a game getting 50 60 yards with a Latavius Murray and then there's other games where I rush 20 times and I get 120 yards it's just you know it's very realistic um, you know, and it, uh, the better the defense that you're facing, the harder it's going to be to run on them. And it's just, you know, 
just how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to get 150 rushing yards on the Seahawks. That's just not going to happen all the time. Um, fumbles, I set the 53, just a little higher than normal. Uh, the default, which is 50. Um, and it just makes it so that, you know, even if set to 50, I was only getting a fumble once every other game or so. But with this set to 53, I'm getting, you know, there's games where I get no fumbles and there's games where I have two or three fumbles. So it's very, very touchy, this, this slider. And with it set to 53, it gives me that realistic, you know, you never know if there's going to be a fumble. Um, and maybe one, maybe two, maybe three fumbles a game. So, uh... If you don't like it, I would lower it to maybe 51 or higher it to about 56 if you're not getting enough fumbles. But I feel like that number is perfect where it's at. Um, pass defense reaction time and pass coverage, I'm going to group into one little comment. There will be a link in the video description um, bringing you to an Operation Sports uh, post that somebody made. I forget his name. But they found that with the pass defense reaction time set low and the pass coverage set high, the game makes it so that it relies more on the corners, the the secondaries, um, man coverage and zone cover skills, depending on what kind of play you call, and makes it more realistic so that corners don't rely on this magnetism where they get they are just glued to their receiver right at the start of the play. They know it's a pass. If the pass reaction, if the pass defense reaction time is set to 84 instead of five, they're going to be stuck. The even the worst corners in the league are going to be stuck to their receivers like glue from the start of the play. With it set to five, it makes it so that they at least can adhere to. If it's a play action, if it's you know, they have at least a little bit of a brain going, but that more relies on the pass coverage skill that they have in their attributes. And it just, it makes it so that it's more realistic. You're going to have a better coverage with Darrell Rivas or Richard Sherman or Joe Hayden versus Terrell Brown or DJ Hayden of the Raiders. It's just how it is. And I give up quite a few completions a game because of play action passes and stuff like that. And quite a few big plays as well, as you can see in my, in my videos. But it's just, it's just realistic because I call... Uh, defense defensive plays to the middle like run middle or something and my my corners get beat and it's just set to any higher like to a hundred or something the defense would it wouldn't even matter the corner would be stuck right onto that receiver like glue um, interceptions I've set to 45 um, this is just a little lower than normal but it makes it so that defenders aren't going to catch every pass that they jump up for. I was getting about two or three interceptions a game. That's just not true. That's not you know how it is. And um, with it set to 45, defenders are going to drop those easy passes. Some of those easy passes, not all of them. But um, it makes it so that there's not as many spectacular jumping, spinning interceptions that you see in this game sometimes. And um, it makes it so that... Uh, there's more drop passes rather than just interceptions and completions. So, uh, tackling I've set to 95. I know some people might think that that's a little high, but with a set lower, I've noticed that running backs just break tackles way too easily, um, and wide receivers as well. Even against like middle linebackers that are charging at them, they just happen to brush them off as if they were nothing. So I have it set to 95. It's not totally maxed out. But it's really close. It, the only reason I set it to 95 is that so that there are a few broken tackles a game. Otherwise, with it set to 100, there's like one broken tackle a game, and it's a little ridiculous. But moving on, uh, we already talked about the computer accuracy, quarterback accuracy, um, pass blocking. I've set to 100. Um, the reason I have mine set to 100 is because. I happen to be very good with the defensive line. I'm very good at the middle, the little mini game that they have where you press A or X and do the, one of the moves and get into the backfield and try to sack the quarterback. I've had games where I've gotten four or five sacks with Justin Tuck. It's just, I don't know, I've had to limit myself to using a linebacker 
instead of using Justin Tuck just to get some realism in there. Uh, because there's no way I'm finishing every game with 8 to 10 sacks. So I just had to limit myself. But if you happen to not be able to get into the backfield whatsoever, definitely adjust this number accordingly. I would go down to about 75 at first and then see how you do. And if you happen to get, um, you know, if you happen to just blow up and get 10 sacks in a game, raise it about 10 and just work from there. Uh, wide receiver catching, set to 42. It's the same thing as the user. Um, it's just number that I settled on and you just see more drops when they come across the middle and just get blasted by a linebacker or something. And they just happen to drop. So there's some drops of easy passes as well. <laughs> run blocking, I set to 53. The reason the computer run blocking is higher is because of pretty much I settled on it because of my skill with the defensive line. But with the uh, run blocking set to 53, it allows the computer to at least get some momentum on the ground for against me um i had it set to 50 or 49 and i was getting games against like the seahawks and the uh uh the texans where superstar running backs are going against my terrible raiders rush defense and they're getting 40 yards and stuff like that and then when i had it set to even 56 they would be running 12 times for 200 yards and it's just too much so this number I settled on 53 and it just happens to be perfect for me. So if you don't happen to, if you happen to get either too little or too much in your games, only adjust it by a couple of points. Don't go too don't go too crazy changing this number. Uh, fumbles already talked about. Uh, pass defense reaction time and pass coverage are a little different for the computer. Um, it's just uh, just as I explained it before. Um, you want the pass defense reaction time lower um, than the pass coverage skill, so it relies more heavily on their actual coverage skills rather than their, you know, magnet abilities. Um, interceptions I have a little set a little higher than the user, but that it you don't really notice a big difference. If you make a bad throw, you're gonna pay for it. But with it set to 55, it's still low enough that defenders are gonna drop some of those passes, like especially linebackers. Um, but corners will make you pay if you happen to not use the aim stick while throwing your balls. Um, let's go down special teams. Uh, field goal power, I've set the 50. Um, it's just default number. Um, it, it makes it so that the kicker power, kick power that of your kicker is just how it is it's just you know you this year has been very sad for kickers honestly and there has not been one field goal made over 60 yards i think in fact the longest field goal of the year is 59 or 58 yards and i'm using sebastian janikowski as one of the best legs in football and even with the wind at my back a couple of miles an hour it's difficult to make a 60 yard field goal in this game so 50 is perfect for where um for field goal power uh field goal accuracy i've set to 30 again it's been an abysmal year for kickers um, i feel like it's difficult to aim those field goals um and this at least gives me a challenge at the aiming wedge it's not super wide so that it, like if i were to flick the stick up and shank it i'm gonna pay for it and it's gonna go wide right or wide left pump power same thing as field goal power it's just it all relies on your actual kick power. Um, punt accuracy, I've set to 100. Um, I should lower this, but um, I find that, uh, actually, you know what? I ain't gonna lower this right now. I'm gonna lower it back, to, I'm gonna lower it down to 30. Um, it makes it so that, um, you know, not every punt is perfect. You know, you're going to get those punts where they're going to go off the side of the foot and they're going to go way out of bounds. So um, that I'm going to change to 30, as a matter of fact. So new update. Yay. And then kickoff power, I've set to 55. Um, the reason I've set to 55 is because with the ball being put to the 35 on kickoffs, 
Um, you see a lot more touchbacks than you than you used to, and I, for whatever reason in Madden, if you kick it, you have to kick it like seven yards deep into the end zone for the um, return specialist to kneel it. So I made it set the kickoff power set to 55 so that most kickoffs go that deep and there are a lot more touchbacks, but there are a lot of returns too from deep in their end zone. So um, it really matters to where the wind's blowing, but um, you will see like a very realistic number of kickoff returns versus touchbacks. Um, I have my injury slider set to 57. Um, I had it set to 50 for a very long time, and with a 57, I do get a couple injuries, you know, here and there. Getting players injured at all, and I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but I was having games where I would literally, like, one season, I remember I had no injuries until the 15th week of the season, and then Derek Carr broke his arm. I just, no injuries whatsoever, not even... Not even an injury during a game where it's like a, a hip pointer or something like that, or like a bruised hip or something. Nothing like that. Um, fatigue, I set to 77. Uh, this is a number that I randomly settled on. I wanted the fatigue set a little higher because I like the auto sub feature, and I uh, don't have time to just constantly keep going in the depth chart and changing positions out. And I run a 3-4 defense, so I like to filter out my defenders as much as possible. And with the fatigues at the 77, they filter out much more accordingly to how you set your auto subs up. And that it will be explained in another link that I post in my video description, going to directly to my operation sports page about my sliders. And it's more in depth on there. Uh, player speed threshold I have set to zero. This should be set to zero no matter what because the lower the number, the more disparity there is between players with speed and players without speed. Simply put, a defensive tackle is not going to catch up to a running back. It's just not going to happen. If a running back gets deep, like, you know, gets past the line of scrimmage and gets past the linebacking area, only a corner is going to catch up to him, if that. So if you have this number set to even 50, or a hundred or something like that, you're gonna have Nadamika Sue chasing down Arian Foster as if it's nothing. And it's just a little ridiculous. So set it to zero and you get the most disparity between players with speed ratings. Um now the penalties. I'm just gonna settle it here so you can see what the numbers are, but I will tell you right now, these numbers are just pulled straight out of the air. Um they don't work. For whatever reason, have been for the last few years. I have not been able to get any pass interference calls. I think I've gotten one pass interference call in the past two Madden games combined. And then I think I've gotten maybe... I've gotten a few holding calls, but even with it set to 100, I get maybe one every three games or so. And... Since I go for realism and realistic numbers, I like to see the penalty numbers as well. So false start, I happen to set at 67, and there's a couple of called a game. And then face mask, I've set to 57. Any higher, you're going to get way too many face masks. Any lower, you're not. You're going to get maybe one a game. But with it set to 57, what this entail, what this does, is it allows um, there to be uh, a makeup of penalty yardage. While there might be less penalties, like in real life, there's probably five to ten penalties a game, average per side. In this Madden game, there's about two to f two to seven penalties, I'd say at most um, total. And with there not being that much penalty yardage, you know, from holdings and offsides and stuff like that, the face mask penalty yardage adds up more quickly. So instead of having 10 penalties for you know 80 yards in a real life game you'll have in one of my madden games four face mask penalties for 60 yards and it just evens out that way while you won't have as many penalties you'll have the same amount of yardage <laughs> um the only other one i will talk about is 
roughing the passer. I was at the 49, um, at 50 even. The reason it's at 49 is because at 49, you're able to at least hit the quarterback after he throws it. Like, I'm not saying like 10 seconds after, but like the quarterback will let go of the ball. And, and if you're in the middle of your tackle and you hit him, if it's at the 50, you're going to get penalized every single time for roughing the passer. With it set to 49, you really have to try and annihilate the quarterback like three seconds after he throws it to get penalized. So that's why it's set to 49, not 50. Um, so yeah, and uh, let's just go into the settings real quick. Um, I play on 13 minute quarters, obviously all Madden. I do run the accelerated clock uh, to 13 seconds, which allows me enough time to go to the line, call an audible if I need to, call somebody a motion. If it's set, I used to have it set to 12 even, and I would get a lot of delay of game penalties. So with it set to 13 at least, um, the clock runs down pretty quickly throughout the game. The games aren't as long, and uh, I have enough time to change up the play if I need to. Game speed I've set to slow, and that's simply because there's more animations to be seen and I feel like normal game normal speed is just too quick so with it set to slow it just it has that right pace for me and that's just my opinion I guess but I like it set to slow it's not you know slow motion or anything if you haven't ever played on slow before if you're if you play on fast but with it set to slow there's more animations to be seen and it just feels like a lifelike speed um, obviously injuries on, um, I turn on Heat Seeker and Ball Hawk, um, it just, I don't know, playing defense is a lot easier with these set on, um, and with the, I know it might seem cheap to have Ball Hawk on, but with the in interception set to 45, there are a lot more drop passes and a lot more tip balls than there are interceptions, so at least evens out. And that is it. Happy maddening. Um, if you happen to have any questions, again, send me a message or a comment. Um, have a good night.